horse end is kind of talking about normal horse behavior and why horses do what they do, how horses perceive the world, um, because that matters into how we handle them in some emergency situations, how they act normally, what they're going to do, um, and kind of trying to get you guys clued into some signs horses are telling you with body language over what's going to happen next. Uh, because most of the time, if you're paying attention, you can tell what they're going to do. However, sometimes people miss the signs that the horse was um, telling them. So I always equate that when people tell me that the dog bit them out of nowhere, I always say, probably not. <laughs> you just weren't paying attention. So, but on the horse end. So the nature of the horse, just kind of basic horse background. They're plains animals. They're designed to be out moving around eating all day long. That's what they're supposed to do. Uh, but what's key for that? They are a prey animal, right? So they don't have a lot of predators anymore, but horses have not forgotten that. So they still think everything is out there going to get them. Um, and their response pattern is flight, okay? So horses, to get out of danger, their main defense mechanism is speed. They are faster than cattle, um, pretty fast reaction times, and they are flightier than cattle, typically. Uh, so just a little bit different working with, with horses than cattle because the nature, right? So cattle normally were horned, herd animals that stick together to fend off predators. Horses don't do that, okay? So they typically are out of dodge. So horses, um, and some of these are gonna be similar between horses and cattle, um, that's really important for people to understand that horses have essentially two types of vision. So they have binocular vision, means they're looking with both of their eyes. So that's when a horse is looking forward. And then they have the wonderful ability to see almost all the way around them. And that's their monocular vision, what they see on one side of their um, face versus the other with both eyes, gives them a pretty wide field of view. So what we always caution people uh, to think about is there are areas that the horse can't see. So even though they have such an extreme field of vision, there's a few places that they don't see. Okay, that is directly down below them under no their nose, essentially, so that kind of four feet below them. That extends under their belly, so people tend to forget that part. They cannot see <laughs> under their belly. They also don't see directly over the top of their head. That typically is not going to be an issue for this type of work, but oftentimes our riders get in trouble if young horses are not experienced. And if you flail your arms about, your arms are coming out of nowhere from that horse's perspective. So that can be a real danger. Um, and we often always teach people about, you know, the horse can't see behind them. Um, and that is true if the horse is pointing straight ahead. However, if my horse does this, he can see behind them because he's just moved his visual field. So <laughs> recognize when you're going to startle a horse behind them is when the horse is focused forward. And we're going to talk about how do you know where the horse's attention is directed because that's important. That's one of the key pieces to kind of keep you out of trouble. The other things that often come up for, again, emergency type of scenarios is if we need to get horses out of Dodge, we may need to get them in horse trailers, okay? So horse trailers, especially for a scared horse, are not their favorite areas, but that's because that looks like a dark hole for them, right? So they have this big field of vision and you're trying to put them in the tiny dark hole in the middle of it. So that is not often where they're going to want to go. Okay, so that does take a level of skill to get horses and trailers if you're not used to that. And that can be a terrain wreck if you're not. So again, that's what I'm gonna say. If you don't have the skills, it is okay to not be involved with that portion of the exercise. Horses also have very poor depth perception. So while humans think that things make sense, horses can see shadows or lines on the ground no depth perception to them, that's a hole, okay? And so horses can do some unusual things from our perspective that from their perspective, that's all kind of normal stuff. So we have our cute little pony that is uh, making heroic leap over the very, very scary poles. This is pretty normal horse behavior in my world. Like I, I am used to this kind of thing. But um, if you ever see a horse that is kind of looking at something like that, where they cock their head to the side and the trembling starts, they're sort of like psyching themselves up to do it. So when a horse is psyching themselves up to do something, the next thing they do is not subtle. 
okay? Never. It's going to be big and powerful. So watch for that. If they're doing that, oh boy, <laughs> the next thing is definitely oh boy, okay? So um, a little tip for you on watching that uh, body language. So other kind of cues for horses and kind of paying attention to what they're doing, their ears are always good tells. So the ears tell you where a horse's attention is, okay? If the ears are both pointed forward, their attention is forward, okay? So that's always how you can tell. Ears forward means they are concentrating on something in front of them. Ears swiveling means they're paying attention to multiple things. Ears swiveling rapidly means nervous, okay? If those ears are moving rapidly, that horse is pretty anxious you need to exercise more caution, okay? Because they're like, oh, there's too much coming at me. Um, there's some other things ears will tell you as well, but as far as attention and what they're concentrating on, that's kind of what the key is. You also, you can kind of see the level of arousal of a horse when the head comes up and the ears are forward, they are more intently focused on something else. And if you see extra muscle tension in their neck, that means they have more concern about what that is. So sometimes they'll just pick their head up to look at something. But if you see like muscles in that horse's body, they're ready for the next motion. Okay, so pay attention to that. And that's those scenarios where if you come behind a horse that you can tell his focus is all forward and there's some tension, those are the ones that are more likely to react to something happening behind them more immediately because they, they were not even thinking about what's back there and that's where you can kind of catch them um, unaware. Sounds that you should make with horses depends on the scenario. So it depends on what you want the horse to do. So sharper, higher sounds tend to create motion, okay? So if we need motion, we use those kind of sounds for motion. If we want to calm them down, Quiet, low, easy tones are the best to lower arousal, okay? I see a lot of people, I train a lot of kids, um, handling horses, kids and young college students, um, that we get some misperceptions. Horses do not come to dog sounds. So any of the kissy kissy will not bring the horse to you, okay? That sends them away. So sometimes people try to interact with them more similar to small animals, and that's not a good way to go, okay? So these long, slow, soothing sounds. I always say if you need to de-escalate tension in a horse, just kind of carrying on a nonsense conversation kind of will help keep your voice tone a little bit lower, takes the tension out of you, and so then everything tends to go a little bit better. Um, so just changing that voice. Um, sirens come blazing in on a scenario are not good for horse handling. So if you want to escalate a situation, the sirens will do it. Um, but they're not going to direct the horse, I guarantee it. That's going to just create random motion that is a little harder to control. So sounds can be helpful for you, but we have to use them sort of in the right uh, manner. Touching horses. A lot of people get wrong where horses actually want to be touched and where they do not want to be touched. The best places to touch a horse, the neck and the shoulder. That's neutral zone, okay? So if you've never handled this horse before, that shoulder is the safest place for you to be, and it's the safest zone horses like to be touched. They actually do not really appreciate being touched like this, okay? And most people are like, how about I touch your nose? I don't like people touching my nose. Horses don't like it either. So <laughs> there are some areas to avoid. Horses can be extremely sensitive about their head. And that can often catch people unaware, um, especially a horse may be standing there. And if you've got one that's a little twitchy around his ears, and you go to just put a halter on him like it's no big deal, you may have a sudden reaction that can sling that head into you and create a lot of damage, or that horse can be out like a shot. Okay, so do not assume that all horses are used to having things done to them. I always say if you're approaching a horse for the first time, you better handle it like a Mustang because you do not know what his past experiences are. Never assume. That's why when I said, you know, if we're going to take photographs of a horse and things like that, don't just think like, oh, I'll just brush the mud off of him off of his legs. If he's never had his legs handled, he may object to that. And if they object, it's fast 
and you won't like it. Okay, so always, always, always exercise caution. And I'm not here to terrify you about horses, uh, but just recognize if they are stressed and they haven't been handled, they react so much differently than horses that are used to that. If you do want to touch a horse to kind of calm them down, this is how we calm a horse down. Our human nature likes to pat them. That does not calm a horse down. That actually raises its heart rate. So this is calming for them. That will help calm them down. But slapping them like that, good job, buddy. You're doing good. It'll be fine. This is not helpful. Okay, so long, slow, kind of firm strokes are better for them. Horses are also very herd nature. So what one horse does, all will do. So you have to, when you're working with groups of horses, sort of keep that situational awareness of what is going on with that herd. Because um, you may be interacting with a calm horse, but if there's another horse that's getting upset and ready to flee, that can bleed over to the whole group. Um, if you're working with a calm horse and kind of a dominant horse comes up to that one, that horse is leaving, right? It does not care about you. It is getting out of the way of the dominant horse. And it's really like the domino effect. If you have one horse start running, just let it go, right? So if, you're, if the herd is running and you have one horse, you might lose that battle, okay? And if you're standing in the way of the one horse by itself and the other ones are running, catch them as a herd, don't worry about it, uh, because they can be uh, pretty dangerous if they're trying to get back to that herd. And as much as possible, do not separate them. So horses don't like isolation. They'll get really panicky if they're the only horse and all the other ones have left. So you can see a lot of stress behaviors in them. They may try to leave, may try to leave over the top of you, may try to leave out of the trailer, lots of things if they're isolated. So again, if it's a group of horses that have to be moved, the ideal way is move them together and don't separate them out. Other things to um, be aware of. So agonistic behavior is essentially just a fancy word for kind of these aggressive behaviors. Um, if you're bringing horses together in intermingulum, if it's a rescue kind of thing, tornadoes, and we're gathering up groups of horses, um, horses don't like strange horses. So whenever um, horses that don't know each other are intermingled, there are usually some sort of horse discussion. Okay, so horse discussions, um, sometimes it's a lot of sound and just stomping and things like that, but they can actually be pretty territorial and aggressive. So we wanna make sure that you do not mix horses together if at all possible. And for y'all's purposes, you really need to know when horses use threat gestures. So horses will give you warning how fast you react to. That is, you know, they're pretty fast too, but they usually give you warning before they say, get out of my space. And so a lot of those gestures are about, you leave me alone, get out of my space. So the ears are the most common one that people think about when a horse's ears start to flatten down on their head, they're saying, stop what you're doing or get out of my space. So you have to be aware of that, okay? So anytime those ears start to go like that, they're unhappy. If the nose turns in your direction with the ears, they're escalating that threat gesture. They're saying, I'm not kidding. And if you fail to pay attention, they can remind you you should, okay? So horses, when they bite, it's pretty fast, uh, but they typically have given some sort of that gesture. If you are ever approaching horses and the ears go down and the head lowers and snakes out, get out of the pen. Okay, so, <laughs> they're really not kidding at that point in time. Um, and you may see that, okay? I've seen it definitely from different horses. And who knows, it's not your job to know what their baggage is or why, but they're not kidding at that point in time. And they will clear you. <coughs> the other thing to pay attention to is the back end of that horse. So if a horse is kind of trapped or cornered, they generally give a little bit of a threat gesture before they kick you as well. Again, it's fast, okay? But if they lower that rump, okay? So if they start to lower that rump and you see that tension in those hindquarters, they're again, they're readying themselves. They're telling you, this is what I'm going to do. Or if you ever see a hind leg that comes off the ground, okay? That is also a pretty good significant threat gesture. So if they just kind of hover it a little bit, 
if you're not paying attention, they've warned you and they will follow through. Okay, so all of those are kind of the key things we want you to pay attention to. If you see that, there is no harm in <coughs> retreating. Okay, and especially in y'all scenario, your job is not to train a horse, it's not to work them through their issues, anything like that. It's to stay safe and get them out of harm's way. I will definitely yield to the angry horse, right? Not my job to train your horse, I'm out. Because <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to continue on to do um, other things. So this horse here, um, if you look at him, well, let's just, what is that horse telling you right there? So he's unhappy about something, okay? So, and we don't have to figure out what it is that he's unhappy about, but the ears are back and just a little bit of that head turn. So it's kind of pay attention to what he's telling us right now. This is not the scenario you guys want to be in. Um, horses typically are not going to attack you. So that's the nice thing. So horses will always choose flee if they have an option. If the horse does not think he has an option, then that is when the fight response may kick back in. So if they're trapped, okay, for some reason in a small environment, they're trapped physically, they're trapped because of they fell through something or they've fallen and they can't get up, they're trapped in their head, they can react by biting. So one of the best examples I had of this is one of my uh, former students, we had a little mare that was kind of skittish and she fell down in the stalks. So we had to get her out of the stalks. They were not like removable ones. So we had to come and like manipulate this horse and the student that was handling her, she loved this little horse. Um, she ended up buying the horse, keeping it forever, but she got close to that horse's head and she nailed her as fast as anything because that little horse was scared to death at that point in time. This was not an aggressive horse, but she reacted quickly and violently and not something that that student would have predicted um, from that horse. So some of those things where I said the zones stay away from, if it's a, not a horse you know, do not mess around up in those zones or the belly and the flank area that just don't do it. It's not your job, right? is just to get them to safety because those are the, the places that they have more baggage sometimes with um, and to be careful. Now that horse, the nice thing, kind of what the video was talking about, the defensive aggressive horse, he didn't want to kill the guy or he would have stayed there and finished the job. Um, so that's nice to know. <laughs> sometimes they'll just get rid of you. <laughs> um, and uh, that's different than something that's real serious about taking you out, okay? So um, if you ever see any, do not mess with anything that's real serious about getting rid of you. But I, I did want to point out, they, it's fast when they decide that this is not the most fun. Again, I've never mean to panic people <coughs> about horses. Um, so horse handling, the biggest thing in your guys' scenario is don't panic the horse, okay? Keep stress low. If you do not have people that work with you that cannot keep their own stress low, they do not need to be involved with this, okay? So you have to be calm to deal with stressed horses. So I really, that's important for you to know your own limitations. Horses have dangerous zones everywhere. They can bite you, they can sling their head into you, they can kick you, they can run over the top of you, they can strike you. So there's lots of places near horses that can hurt you. And the nice thing is they don't usually mean to do it, right? So that horse kind of meant it, but he still was like, I just want you away and then I'll leave. But when they're panicky, how many of you have seen people do that? Like, stop horse, don't do that, <laughs> okay? They will T-bone you no problem, okay? Because they're worried about their own thing. So always do not try to be the impediment to a horse leaving the scene. Few other things, and we're gonna probably make you have a working lunch here, so hopefully you guys don't care too much about that. Um, horse handling, again, quiet, calm. The calmer you can be, the better. If that is not your zone, if you're gonna be nervous around working with a horse, leave it to somebody else, because it'll just get worse. Um, the other thing that I see super, super common when people are handling horses is you wanna pull a horse somewhere. Horses lean back against pressure. So you will not pull a horse anywhere. Don't even try it. So this horse here is doing classical reaction. He's worried about something, he's pulling back. You're not gonna win. If you do get them stuck, and we'll do it a little bit with the horses out there, diagonal pressure is always more of your friend, pulling them more to the side than, than front on. That's not gonna work for them. 
Uh huh. I would never pull a horse into a trailer. I push a horse into a trailer, and I do not mean that physically. Okay, so it's mental. Yeah, yeah. You, pulling them in will be a wreck. So basic horse handling tips: uh, always approach them from the shoulder. It's the safest place. When I catch a loose horse, I catch the neck of the horse first with a little subtle lead rope action. I don't ever just go here. You're going to wear a halter because they may not accept that. And a lot of times it's kind of like magic. If you can get that rope around their neck, then they're like, oh, I'm caught, I'll stay here. Um, versus I see so many people that just want to put the halter on. Don't do that. Try to actually capture the horse a little bit. So this one I think is kind of important, again, is recognizing who should help you. So having qualified people help with horse handling is going to be really important. So the Oklahoma Large Animal First Responders, they have more experience if it's sort of a disaster emergency sort of thing. The other um, people to really think about, stock contractors, while you may not always think about that for animal handling, they move large groups of animals that have very little handling. They're used to it. So they actually can be really, really helpful in those type of um, scenarios. People that work sales barns, they have a lot of experience moving groups of animals through small spaces. So they can be a real asset for you. Um, and then always your, why I would say a county extension, that doesn't mean that Rick is gonna come catch your horse for you. Um, but <laughs> our county educators are gonna have those contacts that if you need them, um, we'll be able to help out. So they're always going to be a good resource to get you connected to the right people.